So, it's August, and that means a lot of you guys who wanted to look good on the beach this summer, you've cut out the junk, done the cardio, and even tried some of those fancy new fitness trends like intermittent fasting, CrossFit, keto, paleo, or maybe even done them all at once. Intermittent cross keto? Oh. Whatever it is that you did, hopefully it worked. All those hours spent in the gym on the elliptical eating three pounds of salad. Don't worry, because fortunately, the universe has bestowed upon you the ultimate of gifts, a broken fucking metabolism. And small calves. Because calf training is genetic. Okay? Guys, I'm trying really hard. Like, I swear... There is a theory out there which has been gaining in popularity and scientific evidence over the last few years. And if proven to be true, it could potentially undermine everything we know about fat loss. I'm referring to something called metabolic damage, which to break it all down, it's essentially when an individual's metabolism is slowed down beyond what is normally expected after a prolonged period of low calorie dieting. Essentially, let's say you maintain your current body weight at a daily intake of around 2,500 calories. This is actually about the average for a five foot 10 man weighing around 180 pounds. But for all you ladies out there who watch my channel, you know, all four of you, everything I'm going to say in this video, it applies to you guys as well. You just need to scale it down a little bit. So let's say, for example, you dieted for three months. Perhaps you were inspired by, you know, a certain someone, a certain handsome YouTuber who did a video on how to get a six pack not too long ago. And during this time, you decided to consume about 2000 calories per day, effectively putting you into a calorie deficit, which is good because this is the primary driver of fat loss. Your body will be burning more energy on a daily basis than it takes in in the form of food. So needs to get that additional energy from somewhere and where does it get that body fat that's all that body fat really is i mean people have such a bad stigma behind it but at the end of the day all it really is is an energy storage mechanism okay awesome right i mean everything sounds good well not exactly your body once it's doing this low calorie diet thing for a reasonable amount of time it may actually adapt to this and over time, it'll start to slow down certain physiological functions within your body. And that 500 calorie deficit, which you are so reliant on to stimulate fat loss, it... I don't feel so good. So guys, that is a question for today's video. We are going to be analyzing the scientific evidence and deciding once and for all, is metabolic damage real? And if so, how bad is it? You know, if it takes six months of hardcore dieting to slow your metabolism down by 2%, well then, honestly, who gives a shit? Like, oh no, my life is ruined. I can't have that one extra half Oreo cookie per day. <laughs> but on the other hand, if it is something bad, for example, you dieting down for a few weeks may reduce your metabolism by as much as 30, 40, or even 50%, well then we're kind of screwed. So here's the thing, throughout my research for this video, I looked at a multitude of scientific articles, studies, experiments, all of that good stuff. And although they do differ in their final results for how bad metabolic damage is or for how long it takes to actually kick in, the one thing that is clear and unanimous between all of them is the belief that yeah, it does exist and it does happen to people. There are multiple reasons for why this actually happens to you, with the first one simply being hormonal, involving changes in things like leptin, cortisol, uh, testosterone, thyroid hormone, and a multitude of others. Another reason is a decrease in something we call the thermic effect of food. This is pretty much like an overly fancy and scientific way of saying the energy that we need to give up in order to actually break food down. Guys, when you ingest food, it doesn't just magically like break apart into the pieces it needs to be and then go to all the different parts of your body to do things like synthesize proteins, provide carbohydrates and energy for bodily functions. No, to do that, you need to break it down and that takes a little bit of energy. This is what we call the thermic effect of food. So essentially, less food coming in means your body has to expend less energy in order to break down that food and overall, your daily metabolism technically shrinks a little bit. And overall, there are changes to how your body actually moves. This could be conscious in the form of just basic exercise or subconscious in the form of something we call non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And even the exercise you do, it's actually going to burn less calories when you do it. You may be, let's say 30 pounds less than you were a few months ago, and you may go and do a certain exercise routine, you know, on the treadmill or elliptical or whatever. You may do the exact same distance, the exact same time, the exact same overall physical work, but you burn less calories. And the reason behind that is 
Just because your body was heavier before, your body needed additional work, additional force production to move that heavier body, that heavier physical mass, and that took additional energy in the form of calories. Kind of the crappy thing is that you may be doing the exact same thing that you did when you were 20, 30, 40 pounds heavier and burning less calories. And because of this, your metabolism, once again, shrinks a little bit. And then also you have a multitude of other physiological functions. We're talking respiration, heart rate, sympathetic nervous system activity, the actual energy cost of walking. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. And yes, I said heart rate. I know, it's friggin' ridiculous. It's like your body's like, holy shit, he's dieting, everybody slow everything down. Blood flow, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Now, before we move ahead, the one thing I do want to clarify is that metabolic damage is not the normal decrease in your metabolism that results from weight loss. I mentioned a minute ago that a smaller body will require less energy to sustain itself, and this is 100% normal. That's actually why if you ever do those online metabolism calculators, one of the first things they ask you is, what's your body weight? And you can try this at home. Put in your stats, you know, whatever body weight you are right now, click go, and then you're gonna get a certain calorie number. It's pretty much an estimate of your daily metabolism. Now, go and try this calculation one more time, but this time, drop like 20 or 30 pounds from your body weight and hit go. Chances are, the second number that you guys see, it's probably going to be like one or 200 calories less than your original output because a lesser, smaller body is going to require less energy on a daily basis to maintain that body weight. Now, this is 100% normal. The problem is, metabolic damage is this, plus a little bit more. Metabolic damage is every additional metabolism decrease or metabolism slowdown that happens after the normal decrease in metabolism due to decreasing body weight. So overall, the consensus in the scientific evidence seems to be that metabolic damage, it is indeed real. So, fuck. So the study I mentioned earlier, which had subjects die pretty damn hard for about three weeks, saw an average decrease in metabolism of 108 calories, which could not be explained by normal body weight loss. Another study found relatively similar findings with individuals who dieted down for about eight weeks. Their metabolic damage came out to 4%, which is roughly around, once again, kind of like around 100 calories. Now, this doesn't seem like the end of the world, but when you are dieting down, and it is difficult, the last thing I want is for someone to essentially come and rip away 700 calories worth of additional metabolism, which I could have spent on eating more food. And also, these studies aren't exactly long-term. I mean, we got eight weeks and three weeks, but what would happen if an individual dieted down relatively intensely for three or more months? Fortunately, we do have one much more advanced example. This is something called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. This is probably one of the most famous nutritional scientific endeavors ever taken upon. They took men, and for six months, they starved them. They pretty much had them consume something like 1,500 calories, which is way, that's, that's not even a diet. That's like something even more drastic. This happened back during World War II, and the whole reason of this experiment is because they wanted to mimic and research the effects of what would happen to the human body under the conditions experienced by prisoners of war. These men lost an unprecedented 25% of their body weight, and their metabolism decreased by 20% beyond what was normally expected due to their body weight loss. This is like someone going from 180 pounds body weight and 2,600 calorie uh, maintenance level, a very normal, natural, healthy metabolism, all the way down to 135 pounds body weight and a maintenance level of 1,850 calories, with the majority of their decrease being solely due to metabolic damage. This is a big problem. Did, did, did you guys get that from the last title? No, no? All right, try this one. This is a huge problem because dieting, it sucks, okay? People like food. I know, holy shit, right? Stop the presses, like, oh, such new information. We all like food, and having to eat low-calorie, boring, clean food, and less of it at that, well, it kind of sucks, but we do it anyway. Dieting, it's gonna take some hard work. Anybody out there who says, like, dieting is just, like, the easiest thing in the world and fat's just gonna melt off of you, no, that's bullshit. They either don't know what they're talking about or they do and they're simply lying to you to sell you some crap. At the end of the day, anything worth doing, it's going to take some effort. Otherwise, everybody out there that you see would be walking around at like 6% body fat with like full rip six packs. Do you see that? No, neither do I. For example, let's say you have an individual who maintains their body weight on 2,500 calories. This is essentially their, you know, their natural, good, healthy, normal metabolism, and they decide to eat at 2,000 calories, you know, to stimulate a little bit of fat loss in, you know, lose a few pounds, look a little bit better, feel a little bit healthier, go for that elusive six pack. 
Probably a big reason why they can deal with the diet, cardio, you know, all that difficult stuff is because they know that it's only temporary and there is a metaphorical, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. The problem is with this metabolic damage theory, that might not necessarily be the case. If in the process you actually damage your metabolism to the point where this 2000 calorie intake you are currently on, that is your new maintenance level. That is how much food you have to eat, you know, to avoid regaining the weight. Well then fuck it, it's just not worth it. I can diet down temporarily, but if I've got to do this forever because my metabolism has permanently slowed down, it's just not worth it. Fortunately, there is at least one piece of good news in this otherwise pretty kind of, you know, depressing video. In that Minnesota starvation study I mentioned just a few minutes ago, after participants were reintroduced to normal amounts of food, eventually their metabolisms did recover. Some took a bit more time for this to happen, going as far as the full 20 week recovery period, but for everyone, on average, their metabolisms did go back to normal. The main thing I want you guys to understand, for all the people watching this video who may be dieting right now or have dieted in the recent past, and you may be thinking like, oh man, did I break my metabolism forever? No, that's probably not the case. Okay, so we get it. This stuff kind of sucks. You want to lean down and lose a few pounds, maybe even get a six pack, but in the process, you don't want to end up with the metabolism of a 12 year old girl. And although unfortunately it may be impossible to diet down with zero metabolic damage, there are a few things you can do to mitigate this. So if that, if it does happen to you, maybe it won't be as bad and maybe it won't be as long lasting. The first thing I recommend is no crash dieting. The one thing that seems to be kind of a common factor with all these studies and all the literature I've read about metabolic damage is that when people did overly restrictive eating, we're not talking like a calorie deficit of three, four, or 500. We're talking like, all right, I need to look really good in three weeks. Maybe I've got a, you know, like I've got a wedding or I'm, I'm seeing an ex-girlfriend and I, I gotta be lean. I gotta get a six pack. I'm gonna diet 1000 calorie deficit. I'm gonna do like two hours of cardio every day. I want to lean down as fast and as hard as I possibly can in a short period of time. This like almost over exaggerated severity with your diet. Yeah, you can bet your ass this is gonna slow down your metabolism a little bit more than you'd expect normally. Another piece of advice, and this one I unfortunately have a lot of experience with, is don't be inconsistent. I think it's much better for you and your long-term progress and your long-term metabolic health if you diet down normally, so you don't crash diet, but you are consistent. If you're going to diet down and you wanna lose 20 pounds, which is doable in maybe three or four months, that's it. Do it in three or four months. Don't do this bullshit, which I gotta be honest, this is kind of what I did in 2017. Because I was in Australia, I kind of started dieting down, and then I didn't really have a competition in mind, so I kind of started eating back up a little bit, and I essentially lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, and eventually, finally, from dieting down somewhere, I think I started like January, February, all the way until my competition at the end of September, we're talking like an eight or nine month period where my body weight, it was kind of like, like this. It took me around like, eight or nine months to do what I could have theoretically done in four months had I just really buckled down. And I'm pretty sure that this process, this is what made my 2017 Ascension season probably the most difficult one that I've ever done because of my inconsistency. And eventually over time, my metabolism, it was just, it was just so done with all this up and down bullshit that it was probably a solid one or 200 calories below what it normally should have been. The next piece of advice is to stop doing what I call diet hopping. So a lot of people, they'll start like a new diet, right? Maybe they'll just follow like flexible dieting, like if it fits your macros. And they'll do this for like a month or two. And then maybe it'll start to get a little bit more difficult because this happens to everyone. You know, what you do in month one, probably you're gonna have to, you know, speed things up a little bit and get a little bit more aggressive in months two, three, four. But there are people out there who instead of just, all right, I'll do a little bit more cardio, I'll diet down a little bit more, maybe subtract like 50 or 100 calories from my daily target intake, they'll switch to something completely new. All right, I'm gonna try keto. And then they'll do that for a month. And it'll work really well, but then it'll kind of start to slow down and you know, maybe they don't like it anymore. Maybe the novelty of it kind of wears off and they're like, all right, I'm gonna try paleo now. Now I'm gonna do just intermittent fasting. And they just keep on doing this back and forth bullshit when in reality, look, whatever it is that you decide to do, as long as it's putting you into a calorie deficit, as long as you find that the diet is working for you, that's great, awesome. I recommend you stick with it. Doing this like hopping back and forth, I do three weeks of this and four weeks of that and two weeks of this, no. It's not doing what I just said a minute ago, which is to stay consistent. Find something that works and then do it. And over time, if you have to make slight adjustments, that's completely and totally okay. And the final piece of advice I have for you guys. This, for some of you, I'll be honest, it might be a little kick in the ass, but some of you guys need this. 
My final piece of advice is to stop making fucking excuses. I have seen so many people online use this as an excuse for why they can't lose weight. Oh, my metabolism is, is so damaged from years of weight loss. Or, you know, I, I can't diet anymore because my metabolism has slowed down to the point where it's just impossible. I could eat like a thousand calories a day and it wouldn't work. No, that's not the case. I understand. Trust me, I get it. I really do. Dieting and weight loss... It's not easy, but completely blaming the lack of results you're experiencing on metabolic damage, that's kind of an excuse. I mean, when you actually look, for example, at this Minnesota starvation experiment, even though these individuals suffered extreme amounts of metabolic damage, it still worked. I mean, this is a terrible example. I don't recommend this to anybody, but it did happen. Their weights did decrease gradually throughout the entire six months of the experiment, proving that even metabolic damage aside, when your individual calories are actually decreased sufficiently, weight loss does happen. The best example I can think of, this is the last thing I want to mention before I close out this video. I got um, a DM once, like in one of those Instagram messages. And this guy was talking to me. He's like, Igor, you know, man, I really need some help. Um, I'm dieting really hard and I lost some weight, but I want to keep going and it's not working. And I don't know, man, I just can't keep doing it. And so I told him, all right, fine, tell me your stats. You know, tell me what you're eating, tell me your height, your weight, all that stuff. This guy said, oh man, you know, I can't keep going anymore. Like, I'm going crazy. I am uh, five foot 10, I'm 170 pounds, and I'm eating around uh, 2,300 calories right now. What? Really? That's it? I then proceeded to tell this guy that I, at the time, with a significantly higher amount of muscle mass than him, because I was like, I'm like, eight years older and like 10 years more um, experience. And I told him that with my additional amount of muscle mass, I was like 190 pounds at the time, uh, six feet tall, so I'm taller, bigger. Overall, my metabolism should be much higher. I was dieting down around 2,100 calories. So essentially, according to my stats, I probably have a one to 200 calorie faster metabolism than you, but I'm eating 200 calories less than you. And you're sitting here telling me that you are done, you are maxed out, you are at the end of your wits, you can't keep going. Bullshit. Guys, at the end of the day, metabolic damage, yeah, it is a factor. And yes, it is going to make this process a little bit harder and a little bit slower. But you know what? It happens to everybody. We are all human. And for some reason, there are still people out there who can do this and others who can't. So at the end of the day, if we're all the same species, there must be something else at play. And I'll be honest, it's just fucking hard work, dedication, gritting your fucking teeth and doing what other people, they just don't want to. So guys, taking all that into consideration, really the last thing I have to say is what kind of person are you?